Hi friends over there, uh, we are into our course on risk-based engineering, um, sort of we have come a long way, this is the 11th week or I would say 11th module um, and the subject is prognostics and health management. Um, we will start with the introduction but then before that since uh, this module is comprised of 5 lectures, I will uh, I'll, in a brief, I'll uh, discuss about those five modules of uh, five lectures of this module. Okay, um, I'm Pro uh, Professor Prabhakar V. Varde uh, from uh, Homi Baba National Institute and BARC. Um, so uh, after this, there is one more lecture, and that is on application of risk-based engineering. It's going to be very interesting. In fact. Part of this lecture, that application part uh, of PHM, uh, I'll be covering uh, in uh, part miss one uh, module. I'll be covering there uh, in the last lecture, and that is called uh, transient identification uh, as part of uh, adv advanced uh, scenario that is evolving. You know, so uh, and then of course RUL, uh, we all know that objective of uh, prognostics and health management is. Um, prediction of uh, remaining useful life. So please remember that we are, our topic is prognostics and health management and the ultimate objective is prediction of remaining useful life and uh, under this we will be discussing many statistical approaches, um, uh, artificial intelligence, neural network, deep learning, machine learning and it is going to be very interesting because this is one of the uh, new area. Uh, and how it will be uh, uh, you know, developing into a superior uh, superior uh, technology uh, for reliability per se. Uh, and I will discuss all those aspects. So let us begin this lecture uh, uh, with uh, uh, the module, what are there in this module? There, is, there are five lectures in this module. Um, we all know that we uh, get inspiration from uh, the medical field you know uh, health care system and uh, this is one of the phm is one of the module uh, which is uh, uh, which is inspired from medical in me medical we do diagnosis uh, we do, uh, we do prognosis uh, only thing is uh, it is it goes by experience and here what we will be discussing um, the health of the hardware uh, components, um, not by, of course, experience will be one of the input for that, but then a lot of algorithms will go in processing and the prediction. So towards that, the first lecture uh, is on, on introduction. I'll, I'll introduce you to the subject. It's uh, uh, how, it, uh, how uh, we do monitoring, how we draw the inference, uh, how we do feature extraction on the health of the equipment and then finally we take a decision and of course the RUL prediction is done with the uh, uncertainty because you know predicting a point value uh, that too in a uh, sort of futuristic domain uh, is just like you know a hypothetical. So uh, with every prediction there will be an uncertainty okay and the last module you will see that uncertainty in PHM. So, after introduction, there will be a sort of, uh, because you know, uh, please uh, keep it in mind, this PHM lecture, lecture is different uh, in the sense that uh, we are having a systems approach. Like normally in PHM, uh, you show sensor on equipment, then you do monitoring, feature extraction, pre-processing and then diagnosis, prognosis and finally RUL. But that is not all that simple when you talk in a complex uh, industrial environment. Uh, because we have to prioritize what we want to do. We cannot use that many sensors uh, for prognostics and all that. And um, um, there are two, uh, two sides of this. We can say prognostics is one of the advanced technique and a uh, uh, lot of hope and uh, you know promise from this, this the, it's true. But then uh, in some way or the other, in complex engineering system, the uh, prognostics was there but it was through the experience and a sort of a judgment. Uh, you can say a fuzzy judgment or it could be imprecise but uh, often it was found that the 
एक्सपीरियंस ऑल्सो हैज सपोर्टेड ट्रेडिशनली रिगार्डिंग द प्रोग्नोस्टिक्स एंड हेल्थ मैनेजमेंट प्लान्स वॉट वी डू एंड देन इन पी एच एम द मशीन लर्निंग ए आई आर्टिफिशियल इंटेलिजेंस एंड इट्स अ सबसेट मशीन लर्निंग एंड डीप लर्निंग दे प्ले वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट रोल अलॉन्ग विथ मेनी स्टेटिस्टिकल मेथड्स एंड देन द रोल ऑफ पी एच एम हाउस हाउ इट वर्क्स एंड हाउ इट प्रिडिक्ट एंड फाइनली हाउ वी हैंडल द अनसर्टनटी सो दीज आर द फाइव लेक्चर्स दैट दे फॉर्म पार्ट ऑफ दिस मॉड्यूल दैट इज कॉल्ड प्रोग्नोस्टिक्स एंड हेल्थ मैनेजमेंट नाउ वाइल इंट्रोड्यूसिंग टू बेटर अंडरस्टैंड द कॉन्सेप्ट वी शुड अंडरस्टैंड ट्रेडिशनली हाउ वी डिफाइन द रिलायबिलिटी ऑन दिस स्लाइड आई वुड ओनली से दैट इन रिलायबिलिटी ट्रेडिशनल रिलायबिलिटी इंजीनियरिंग the ex uh, the definition of expectation was uh, go through the uh, will go through the uh, uh, we can say uh, probability that probability of a component failure now uh, probability of component failure uh, uh, is a very good uh, practically it is used for many uh, application prioritization identification but then what the industry or systems would like to hear they would like to hear the instant of failure doesn't matter with some plus minus uncertainty the way uncertainty be characterized in reliability traditionally here also but then they want to take decision so they should know they should know so that that we will be discussing in a brief then introduction to phm uh, one slide so that right uh, at the outset you have an idea before we go deeper into the uh, um, various aspects of and then the phm definition which clarifies uh, whatever uh, uh, we are talking about the traditional approach and uh, you know uh, the phm uh, and then uh, uh, major elements of phm that will be coming in so, uh, you, uh, you can see slowly slowly uh, we are going deeper actually and then the uh, then the concept of life consumption this concept is very old uh, in mechanical engineering life constant degradation uh, rate and all that uh, but somehow uh, finally we have to go to a very robust method where is there is a sensor and that sensor tries to send the uh, rather precursor uh, it sends some signal those signals are monitored and those after monitoring we try to predict the remaining useful life typically let's say uh, a bearing and of course we will be considering a bearing as example without giving reference what it is where it is and all that but then that will be sufficient for us to uh, go ahead and get the uh, feel of what phm does and then application areas of uh, phm just in one slide i'll try to say what is the expanse where it is used it being used where it is being used without calling phm it is a part of surveillance like in nuclear industry so but then uh, but then uh, uh, now the uh, ai and ml they have really turned around the table and now uh, we are able to get the actual statement of uh, remaining life of remaining useful life that is the term okay so you know um, this is the definition of traditional reliability approach reliability is uh, you know failure free operation of a component for a given mission okay uh, for, for, with given conditions so here we have r is a reliability uh, a function of time and the okay, capital t is a random variable small t is the mission time that we are trying to um say whether the component is reliable how many times it has failed and then c1 c2 c3 are the applied condition for example if i test a component in the lab environment definitely its reliability will be more because it is being monitored closely it is a controlled environment to to bring all the uncertainties together it is a control but the moment it goes into the field the the uh, the results may be different or even in the field if we maintain in ground benign condition 22 degree centigrade temperature and 50% humidity or 55% humidity it might perform but you know how this conditions they go when even when it goes to the field that defines the reliability for a mission t small t i would say and then now so with this what we get so here the driver is failure rate lambda failure rate per hour per per unit time let us say um, and then Uh, we get the probability that is that component is reliable let us say 0 uh, for 0.999 almost approaching 1 that means component will be uh, there is assurance from here that component will be working uh, but then 
uh, we don't know uh, the uncertainties which are there uh, as i had mentioned how uh, how we operate it how we maintain it and all that so um, here what we get is probability of failure please mind this term uh, so uh, give this context uh, has given rise to concept of prognostics and health management okay so what prognostics and health management does is it instead of probability of failure it gives instant of failure that means the component will uh, operate uh, smoothly and even if there is a deg degradation based on the degradation what is the remaining useful life so we can track it and then uh, uh, in in real time our management action can be executed you know so a simple case if uh, whether i should shut down my plant today or i should operate for another 3 days if i have information about degradation i can tell no 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 don't have to shut down uh, when you take the next shutdown you can replace it simple or you can replace it not in the shutdown even in next shutdown uh, uh, next to next shutdown and all that because you know you are able to see the trend and you are able to uh, based on that you are able to take uh, get the information so that is the confidence we when uh, it comes when we talk about the instant of failure of course there are a lot of uh, limitation in th this field also uh, so uh, but then uh, at the outset this approach appears very promising and uh, it is applicability is good uh, because it is being used in structural uh, analysis and you know predicting online uh, uh, number of cycles uh, low cycle for t high cycle for t and then based on that what is the uh, when, when the next service is due so what is happening is at the outset our maintenance program is going to be predictive not preventive because when we do preventive good before the component had failed we had to preventive action we did service and all that very good but then we we'll, uh, by shutting down the component for preventive maintenance a lot of remaining useful life component goes off number 1 and number 2 our industrial output or our throughput uh, also suffers because we are doing uh, uh, but then when you have phm probably when the component is approaching its uh, failure uh, we can take that action and use that much life that was available point number 1 at the same time you uh, unsafe failure also you can avoid because and which contribute to the safety uh, uh, you know because you had information about the degradation mechanism or there so it works on reliability as well as risk risk both so uh, the, these two it is like a win win situation only thing is the approach should perform the way we want it and that's a million dollar question because uh, this approach uh, to a great extent it still it is in the um, are in the domain a lot of work is going on but then the the kind of uh, support we have got from aiml uh, is uh, there is a small uh, experience that is that we have over here is uh, artificial neural network and in one way or other the machine learning they were there in 90s also but then uh, we uh, we were not able to realize the importance of the uh, data so for example let's say if the data were analyzed and made ready for ann training by an expert who had domain experience ann would have been performing better so that means uh, in 90s we blamed ann uh, but actually the problem was with the data and now we have a lot of um, uh, techniques for uh, data processing filtration uh, feature extraction and and since the data, data is available in a very refined and uh, uh, you know in categories and you know prioritized and all uh, normalized and all so we are able to predict it better and of course there is a, there is a growth in uh, artificial neural network also now we are able to read what is uh, what is the hidden layer trying to tell what are the activation function they are trying to tell so so many things you know so there is a lot of experience has gone into it let us uh, go to the um, little bit of understanding on prognostics so uh, prognostics deal with in simple word um, rul please remember this word remaining useful life for system structures and component okay and the, the this is first part prognostics the second part of phm is health management 
health management job is become job becomes easier even we may use might use the uh, traditional methods um, we can put into action uh, our uh, planned action uh, if we, if we, if it is a long term issue or even a small maintenance uh, action uh, uh, type of oil we use, should use or you know uh, the uh, serve, uh, more surveillance on the bearing oil okay it's a periodicity and all that so um, it gives a very important input uh, always the problem part do not require a very very serious health management approach sometimes small uh, actions here and there and they they solve your problem and you are on track so uh, so so then we come to the third point what is the power of the phm tremendous we can say if we can work out all our uncertainties which i will be presenting in the last slide probably we have achieved and its power is still uh, uh, apparent in today's con context because it is being adopted in many field especially for components uh, which matters very high uh, on uh, reliability and safety issues i would say safety and reliability because safety is a overriding factor okay and the source of power where it comes from it is very simple we are uh, pre our prediction is based on online monitoring so if, if you are only online monitoring or if you are monitoring uh, over an interval uh, eight hours time and all so in between uh, things can go and we will not know uh, of course uh, there are continuous monitoring signals available in the control room of uh, uh, complex engineering systems uh, but then they will announce when a limit is reached in between the degradation track you know what was going to happen we didn't have any information and uh, like any other uh, technique phm also has got limitation uh, which is uh, it is not effective for catastrophic failure suddenly uh, some critical crack grows okay uh, and suddenly it reaches its criticality then phm may not be but of course this uh, keeping in view the material properties and all that these things are done well in advance actually you know uh, so this is where the exploitation of advanced ai ml in prediction lot of uh, statistical algorithm that are there with us and it solves our problem to some extent and of course uh, as i said a lot of r and d is going on in this field so please focus on this definition and once we understand what is phm uh, i did not find a very satisfying prognostics and health management definition so i have drafted this one probably it will serve the purpose for this lecture of my student who are listening to this lecture so prognostics and health management deals with the evaluation of remaining useful life up to here it's okay based on degradation level uh, signature r and performance data okay so it is not always degradation performance data also can come into the picture uh, of the ssc and provide input performance data means it could be vibration it could be temperature so if these signals are also there is no de degradation per se in the component but these are the uh, uh, parameters which precipitate out well before uh, the um, uh, failure of the uh, component or, uh, or you know serious degradation of the component so, uh, and provide input for corrective actions such that consequences of failure can be eliminated or mitigated if i see the last line such that consequences of failure can be eliminated yes these are being done in many complex engineering system and uh, nuclear industry uh, you know so that uh, because there is a 24 uh, hours monitoring and uh, any parameter going off normal um, it is detected then the redundancy diversity and all those single failure i mean a uh, lot of so that uh, uh, my argument is phm and uh, whatever existing approaches are there uh, which uh, 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 this which incorporate resilience into the system they go together and the phm uncertainty can also be uh, can be managed actually so um, if you see the major modules in phm or steps in phm i would say Uh, they are like uh, uh, again you bring back the control room uh, scenario of a, a complex engineering because i told you this lecture is going to be a, a, a systems approach not a, uh, not only a components approach of course at the end of the day we we we'll talk about the component only to demonstrate this approach but this is how it is then um, uh, first of all, first thing is that we focus on data data is coming to the 
control room but it may not be from all the equipments uh, uh, some equipments the data is there on the local uh, panel so for some equipment it is there on the um, control room uh, so uh, once we want to adopt phm we have to have an strategy uh, for certain components we want to have phm that means not only monitoring but analysis the way an expert comes and takes a decision our module should take a decision uh, we can operate this equipment for such and such period and uh, you know the control of stop can take the action you know so that much confidence should be there in our phm so we have to complete mathematical modeling that we have to do present the result in a manner and probably in, uh, provide an advice also so uh, because the, uh, if experience is there advice can also be generated so th this is how it is then <clears throat> so uh, once the data is there is coming you can detect what is going wrong before the consequences occur and if we detect any defect or any deviation per se uh, defect comes much later uh, deviation comes before that uh, then the diagnosis is performed okay and this is a routine in uh, any plant except that prognosis provision is available at the level of uh, human judgment and analysis and of course the last module also O&M planning that is also a, uh, you, you know so uh, let's say if I have a rule based system again an intelligent system uh, or fuzzy rule based system so I will have a complete uh, matrix where it is being answered in computer only o &M will advise ok one component has failed two components are operating three were supposed to operate so ok you can manage it but you have to bring back the sick component also uh, within 24 hours or 8 hours and all that and then finally it will, for the sick component it might advise ki what is the problem whether it is a control failure it is oil, lubricating oil failure it is a, uh, you know uh, any other uh, type of failure and pro probably you can take an action 24 hours is uh, uh, more than sufficient you know the way we do in normal uh, situation so when we have uh, prognosis uh, we will be able to also tell what is going wrong with this equipment pointedly because if uh, I if I say that there is a low by pressure low but then unless until I find out a component whether it is a filter or whether it is a uh, lubricating oil pump um, uh, there will be a lot of confusion for some time not confusion diagnostic takes time okay so uh, we cover all the module part and PHM uh, very well covers all these things even it uh, it is focused on components also and uh, you, you can take it further to the system also by putting resources so how it happens it happens like this that we have um, a sensor precursor because for every comp component we, we want to do PHM the failure mode effect analysis is the first thing which will tell us uh, what is the mode of failure and what is the mechanism of failure if it, we have to use physics of failure approach and then uh, for that mechanism uh, what parameter to be tracked and uh, the, this is uh, how it is actually so uh, identify the uh, NPP and where it comes from it is not possible just by judgment you select few uh, few uh, SSC uh, this was the scenario uh, traditionally but then if we have a, a proper probabilistic risk assessment approach where there is an elegant mechanism for finding out the importance of the component and, uh, uh, and not only component uh, mechanism common cause failure so which common cause failure should be tracked and which are the parameter or precursor causing those common cause failure so track those things and you will have advanced idea about this uh, very uh, very optimistic but it is not out of bound it can be done actually then uh, sensor for tracking the precursor in fact sensor selection because the time constant of the sensor uh, the kind of you know uh, uncertainty that it captures accuracy that it captures uh, precision it captures uh, there are so many parameters comes uh, so uh, the, pro, uh, the, uh, the PHM start with the sensor selection though I will not be talking about sensor much because I feel if I have to implement PHM approach in an existing plant then there are sensors 90% of the time we should be using those sensors which are available whether you get the information from the process or from the component it is it is it is our prerogative but uh, and of course learning is a continuous process we, we but then this probabilistic risk assessment so that's why we are making PHM is integral part of risk based engineering.
okay so then prognostic algorithm what it will tell, tell you the degradation mechanism and once the, see this is basically a point value uh, trending it over here but then that does not happen normally we uh, do uh, rul prediction with uncertainty also we estimate okay so this uncertainty so if there will be one curve above one curve so that that will give us ki what is the remaining useful life over here you know based on this degradation and with the uh, point value and it's upper bound and lower bound and the application in risk based is approach is um, it could be risk based in service inspection uh, risk based design in fact all together if we are building uh, a new system it is better to um, uh, focus on the component which are which will become inaccessible point number 1 and which are life limiting so for this component i'll come to one of the slides so uh, which will become life limiting on these components the way in in a, a classical approach people used to put coupon to understand the corrosion uh, level of corrosion and corrosion rates we can have sensors there you know so this thing and of course for regulation and regular maintenance of course we have, we have been talking about you know so this is the advantage of uh, the uh, phm approach and then uh, it is just a one uh, one uh, one philosophical thing uh, that you know um, when we have li life consumption monitoring uh, we assume some design severity what will be the severity and then for design severity we'll say this component will touch the threshold failure threshold and it will fail or rather we can say with uh, conservative thing we said up to here we should use it but then this point remains same if the severity change then the failure will come little early and then the potential for risk monitoring without it remains this area we may make a loss here actually you know uh, because um, high severity it failed and there is a uncertain scenario scenarios and uh, our mark was this one so it has failed earlier and it has put us uh, a risk component uh, into the system but suppose if the severity level was less so its life will be more so uh, but then we had thought like in preventive maintenance we thought of replacing this component here because it will fail so we lost the useful life of the component so both the scenarios um, are we are um, uh, undesirable we want to have through phm the failure in such a manner that no risk and no uh, useful life uh, you know loss of useful life so this is what it's a very important uh, slide uh, it's a philosophy which backs up the implementation of phm actually now application area um, now if i see so many applications so i will not be confident in saying that this is a new approach because in aviation for uh, for uh, monitoring the life of the wing or if the, uh, uh, when uh, when some minor crack is detected so now this uh, uh, structural engineering approach uh, probabilistic structure mechanic approach is matured enough to tell us uh, when the things will reach critical crack length so that means a monitoring on the system uh, and a crack small crack all the cracks uh, don't go to pro propagation uh, very fast the, you require some critical parameter or you know low cycle or high cycle fatty to reach that kind of condition so aviation it is being used even it is being used for many uh, system monitoring online uh, then defense yes it is uh, very uh, and then especially if you see whether it is defense or aviation um these approaches become very common for uh, turbine or pump bearing monitoring okay and we have al will also demonstrate with this approach only a small demonstration is there uh, we are not giving intricate details there but then you will be convinced yes this is how it can be done in nuclear also it is being used uh, for so nuclear we have to uh, to uh, right since beginning of inception of nuclear because uh, as part of conservative and defense in depth, depth approach this particular thing was there monitoring even a rarest of rare parameter even with a very low safety significance um, if you visit any nuclear plant you will see how many trips and parameters are there in the control room they are all being monitored sometimes as a trip that means the moment the parameter uh, deviates and it goes to the limit the system is automatically tripped okay and sometimes in the form of alarm that means they are giving you warning something is ahead that means this can be taken as one of the prognostic parameter the otherwise the system will go to the uh, trip condition okay so uh, uh, so in nuclear it is somewhere or other but then if we talk about the 
uh, if we consider the traditional definition of PHM, nuclear industry also for equipment. Of course, uh, 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 the industry has gone up to the condition monitoring stage. Okay, and condition monitoring has benefited a lot. So why not convert them into PHM algorithm and try to understand the advanced degradation? Uh, but there also, uh, if we, if I if there is a component uh, which is uh, which might fail, uh, you know, catastrophically, then PHM doesn't work actually. You know, then you have to say the. But of course, before the failure propagates to a level where its consequences become se severe, uh, there also we have a scope that yes, it has given a warning to us in advance. You know, now uh, then uh, component level it is there. Uh, then uh, structural health bonding, the, I told you this motor bearing, gearbox, electronics. Electronics, uh, I think uh, industry has made good advances in prognostics, uh, whether it is canary or whether it is a physics of failure approach or data. But again, the, even the electronics industry is slowly converging to a level uh, till uh, a good uh, science is available from physics of failure approach, a data driven approach is, uh, is, uh, is a preferred approach. So that we'll see. Uh, and then uh, uh, we'll see uh, how PHM, I, I think, discuss all these uh, uh, points uh, that, you know, design stage and operation, it is maintenance uh, thing and, you know, uh, identification and prioritization of equipment is, uh, comes through RBA because PSA give input to risk-based engineering and risk-based engineering provides input to the PHM. So that's why PHM and RBA is connected for uh, oper operating plant also and for design plant also. For design stage, it is best if we can choose the area for implementation, maximum benefit will be there if we incorporate PHM during the design stage itself, identify the component. And of course, uh, all the technologies are available, PSA technology is available, um, you know, um, structural engineering technology, electronic technology is available. So design right at the outset. So uh, for life limiting component, it is very good idea that uh, at design it's a, it's a stage itself, we have this technology available. And then system reliability assurance. Okay, so it is altogether. Uh, it's not only component, but system reliability also can be assured because if you have a uh, monitoring on component, then definitely the advantage reaches on the system also. And reduction in risk, yes, because we know that we know the life tended or rather you know with accepted uncertainty, and we know that uh, we can avoid the failure. So risk also reduces. So component fails in two ways: safe failure, unsafe failure. So unsafe failure can also be, uh, rather unsafe failure they might get more uh, more importance uh, when it comes to a complex engineering system. So uh, now we have see, seen that you know data driven uh, physics of failure, these are the two approaches and third approach comes by combining data driven and physics of failure approach which is called fusion approach. Okay. And there is a third approach which is again a part of physics of failure approach, it is called canary approach. Canary approach means uh, uh, we will discuss in one of the slides, canary means a bird which was kept in mine in traditional time uh, during up to 1980 or so, uh, they, a bird will be placed in the mine, uh, it's a change of color uh, of its feather uh, that will tell us that there are, there are poisonous gases in the mine. So advanced intimation of the situation in the mines, uh, especially carbon monoxide and then action will be initiated so that we do not have um, health uh, health effects, adverse health effects and fatalities. So based on this a canary approach has come. Here also the canary will give uh, the status of degradation before the actual card or electronic card or component fails. So this these are the major approaches over here and I think probably you would have got a fair idea uh, in this. Uh, first, I spoke about the modules, what we have in PHM, then PHM elements and definition, major modules in PHM, a general approach to PHM and some PHM application. Just I, I was hinting at it actually. Thank you very much.